I'm Manu Kakopian. Thank you for tuning in and thank you to our partners, personal injury attorney Nelson Gaborkian. We're here with Fernando Beltran, Zanferhead Promotions founder here in Tijuana, Mexico, getting ready to announce the Jaime Munguia Surache fight on December 14th. Another homecoming fight for Jaime here in Tijuana, Fernando. Talk to us about how much the Tijuana community rallies around Jaime and just in general, it's star fighters. I think the community here is sensational. I'm here supporting Jaime. Jaime wanted to do a homecoming and as you know, we're very close. And um, he wanted here to make history because nobody has sold out. Even though Morales fought here in 2010 in this stadium, it was not a sold out, not even close. And nobody has sold out this stadium. Uh, and uh, for him, it's, not a, it's like a challenge. And not only a challenge, he wanted to go back with his people after a, after a busy year with uh, Ryder, Canelo, and uh, Basinha. Uh, I think uh, he wanted definitely to, to, to go with the, uh, here in Tijuana with his fans. And I think he's very happy about it. He's very, very happy. He was telling me he was how happy he was. Uh, Caliente supporting him big time uh, on, uh, on bringing him to the stadium. And uh, they're gonna do a huge promotion on him. So I'm very excited for him. How many fans do you expect? What does the sellout uh, look over, like? Over 34. Wow. So that because because the the court is also covered with seats. Mm -hmm. So this holds 33,333 30, seats plus the court. So over 30,000 is expected for this event. That, that's that's what. Uh, otherwise, you uh, will not be very happy. <laughs> but but uh, I think he wants. He really wants to sold out. What? How important was it to him to fight this year? Four times is a lot of activity for fighters this year. Uh, the, uh, these fi uh, fighters th I, I th think, these I think years. he wanted to make a statement when he came back. You know, uh, most of the people who fight Canelo don't fight in a year or in two years. I don't know if they go to spend their money or, or, to, or because the fight is too tough. I think Canelo came back five days before him in September. Right. Both guys came back with undefeated fighters, one with Berlanga and one with Basinian. Uh, the only difference, uh, Jaime, Jaime thank, th thankful, thank God he, he got the knockout on, 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 on five days after. And he came back right after. He wanted to come back right after. He, he, I, I think for him, it was a very tough loss with Canelo. I think he was uh, mentally, he was like, he wanted to get back in the ring and clear that up, clear that up. How, how much has the loss also helped his profile and made him an even bigger star? Oh, big time. You, you know, as, uh, just just in social media, you can see he's, he entered the fight with uh, less than 400,000 followers on Instagram and he, one day after, he was 1.4 million. A million followers. overnight, oh, wow. Yeah, a million overnight. So. That fight, because of his performance, because of uh, he he he, well, since the first bell with Canelo, he went to try to win the fight. Right. And, and everybody noticed that he yeah, was, he he was going forward. He yeah. was winning the first the first three rounds mm -hmm. and, until the fourth. He got cut. Uh, but uh, but then he came back and, and I think he won he won several rounds and it was a very competitive fight. Jaime mentioned earlier the one fight he would really love is either against Caleb Plant or Edgar Belonga. Correct. You as his head promoter, how can you make that happen? Is, is that what you're going to try to well, do? I'm more than an advisor because he the, the, the decisions. He, he takes his decisions and he I'm just uh, trying to support him and following him. Uh, I think uh, both fights are very makeable uh, with Berlanga or with, uh, with Plant. Both, both fights are very easy to make, and uh, and uh, I don't see much out there, you know, like like. And Billy. Probably, uh, I saw. I mean, I saw also they mentioned Pacheco. Diego Pacheco, of course, uh, yes. 
there's a there's some confusion as to who Jaime is tied to. Oscar De La Hoya the other day wanted to make the Pacheco fight with. Uh, oh, it's part of his team. Oscar, Oscar is part of his team, you know? mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and he's he's on his he's on his own. But uh, but uh, of course we are. Everybody's a team, and everybody tries to make. To, to support him to make the best of his career. So after this is the last fight with top rank, it's going to be Golden Boy after this no, one? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that uh, there's room for everybody. I, uh, that's the way I see it. And the way I see it is the, uh, he, he's making all the decisions and uh, we're trying to support his decisions. The ones that will care about him and love him, we're trying to support his decisions. So uh, Eddie Hearn has said Diego Pacheco and Jaime Munguia, they could sell out Crypto Arena in Los Angeles. Yeah, how many people Diego Pacheco put in his last fight? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think you can hear the sound of the punches uh, in every in every single seat because it was empty. So Jaime has sold out all the arenas. So I respect a lot uh, Eddie Hearn, but that's, Diego Pacheco is not a sailor. So who would you like for Jaime to face? Uh, whoever he wants. Honestly, uh, I would love to see the rematch between Canelo and him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we were one year earlier. Canelo's running out of opponents. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, that's uh, that's my, my my that's me saying. It. It's not him. He's he's the boss. He's the one who who's gonna who's gonna choose his uh, the next for his career. But uh, I'm I'm very. I'm very confident that he that he he made the right decisions. Very quickly on some of your other fighters, Juan Francisco Estrada looks like he wants to fight at 118 pounds. What do you have planned for him? Well, I think we need to sit down first and see what's out there and see and see and see what's the best for him. And uh, that that will come very quick. Very, very, very quick. So, so let's see what happens. Uh, the fighter he lost to, Bamban, he's a very good fighter. Very, very good fighter. Solid, solid champion, mm -hmm. I think. Could maybe Nakatani? Can we expect as a, band, as a fight for what, Why 118? Why not? Um, uh, Miguel Burchell, does he have a fight coming up? Yes, he's fighting on the 30th, November 30th in uh, Yucatan. And uh, I think he's, he's, this, this will be the, his third fight. Coming out. Since the Nakatia loss? Yeah, yes. And, uh, and I think he's looking very good. Let's see what happens. What weight will he be fighting at? 135. So he wants to stay at 135 for 135. the... 135. He wants to stay at 135. And who's the opponent? Uh, the opponent? Oh, I don't remember his name right on top of my head. But I will. I oh, promise we'll you I'll text you. We'll, we'll, we'll follow up. Um, and then... Luis Neri, could we expect him to be on the undercard for this uh, event? Yes, probably, probably, probably he will be on the undercard. Um, I think on Monday the, 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 we will decide, and he will decide, Jaime, who is going to be supporting him in the in the undercard fight. Fernando, congratulations! Thank you. Very I know much. this is a big event for you too, bringing it to your home city. Yeah, and, uh, to be involved in this great event <laughs> is uh, to be to be supporting Jaime is sensational to be advising him and everything is just unbelievable it's a dream come true and congratulations on a big 2024 in in a two-day span you promoted Mungia Canelo Neri Inouye you worked on the Floyd Mayweather exhibition yes earlier this year so yeah. a big 2024 for uh, my you my best my best to Floyd he's sensational thank you thank you very much